This conference will now be recorded. So today let us start off with one more new topic that is microservices. So this microservices, it's not a framework. This is not a framework. It's an architecture. It's an architecture to develop the software applications. So this microservices term is not only related to Java. We can relate to any other technologies like it may be related to PHP or it may be related to .NET or it may be related to uh, Python. So we can use this microservices concept to any technology. Now, so what is this microservices? Is just dividing and work here. Microservices is used to break up is used to break up single large monolithic system single large monolithic system into multiple independent components so single large monolithic system means up to now whatever the projects we have done we call them as monolithic applications what is this monolithic is what we have done whenever you are creating web project we are creating only one web project we are deploying only into one server and we are connecting only to one database such type of things we call it as monolithic applications so this monolithic application we want to divide into multiple independent components such type of architecture only we call it as microservices just a breakup concept only we call it as microservices divide and work concept only microservices it's a architecture it's not a framework it's a architecture okay. so what is this monolithic is in monolithic application in monolithic application all functionalities all functionalities are part of single program all functionalities are part of single program running in a single environment running in what single environment let me elaborate more using a diagram monolithic application let me open the diagram so this is our monolithic application in the case of monolithic application we create only one project we go with only one web project like example shopping application and we deploy only into one server we deploy into one server and in this we are going with the components like buyer profile the models like buyer profile catalog management cart management like this and all functionalities are part of what single application means we develop all these modules only in one project we create only one web project and we build all the components in one pro project and we deploy only into one server and we connect only to one database we connect what only to one database here okay from client it can be a web client or mobile app so from client we are going to access this application by giving the url we are going to access the application so there will be only one web project one we deploy only into one server and one database such type of applications only we call it as monolithic application so up to now what are the projects we have done all they are monolithic only now coming to this microservices microservices architecture it's an architecture allows microservices architecture allows allows to build the component to build the components independently to build the components independently right so in the case of monolithic application what is it all functionalities are part of single program 
here we go with only one web project one web project we deploy only into one server and we keep all functionalities only in one project and we connect only to one database whereas in the case of microservices we build the components independently okay and deploy the components and deploy the components independently to integrate again finally we have to integrate and to integrate to integrate into a single larger system again finally to make the complete application we have to make it we have to integrate into single larger system so this integration is the major concept of this microservices so we are dividing and working but finally we have to integrate it to make it as a larger system so this integration part is the major concept what we need to discuss related to this microservices now clear up here the need of going with microservices right then how to take care of this integration process before that let us understand more of this microservices using a diagram microservices architecture see when you go with microservices here we have built the components independently check it here see buyer profile buyer profile we are creating like a microservice using java technology and we deployed into tomcat server and connected to oracle database next one catalog management we have created this component catalog management using dotnet technology and we deployed into iis server and we connected to sql server database coming to this cart management we create like a microservice using php technology and we deploy into vamp server and we connect to mysql database right now so here we are building every component independently and we are deploying into a different server and we are connecting to a different database now from client based on the api so from client based on the api we are going to invoke the respect to APS. We are going to invoke the respect to components here. Now, the major thing is one component should interact with other component. So buyer profile may interact with catalog management and catalog management may interact with cart management. Cart management may interact with buyer profile like this. So the components may need to interact with each other. So we have to integrate it. One component should be able to connect to other components so this integration process the integration process is the major concept of microservices then, then who is going to take care of this integration who is going to take care of this integration is we make use of netflix eureka server netflix eureka server if someone is asking you how you developed microservices means we can answer it as by using netflix eureka server so different people go with different different ways of developing microservices in our case we are making use of netflix eureka server so what is this netflix eureka server is netflix eureka server is used for building the service registry server netflix eureka server is used for what to build the for building the service registry server and eureka clients means our microservices eureka clients which will register which will register themselves and discover and discover other services other services to call rest apis so how one service can invoke other service using rest apis now let me elaborate this more using a diagram <coughs> eureka server 
this is the main thing to understand now, let us consider we have created one microservice and let me go with the name student microservice student microservice now what this student microservice is going to do is it is going to accept the school name it is going to accept what school name and based on the school name we want to return the list of students present in that school what are the school name we give we want to return the list of students present in that school that is the task of student microservice now let us suppose this student microservice is deployed in Tomcat server. Student microservice is deployed in Tomcat server running in port number. Running in port number 1111. Some port number. Now, let us consider we are having one more microservice. School microservice. This school microservice is going to accept the school name. It's going to take the school name. And after accepting the school name, school service want to invoke student service. So school service is going to invoke what here? Student service. So one service is invoking other service. So student school service is invoking invokes student service now and let us suppose this school microservice is deployed in tomcat server it is deployed in tomcat server running in port number 2222 now now understand carefully when school service want to invoke when the school service want to invoke student service do we need to provide this location details to school service yes right without knowing the location details where the service is running we cannot invoke it we have to provide the location details where the service is running okay now this is the main drawback here Without knowing the location, one service cannot invoke other service. Now, now the drawback is in future, in future, if this student service changes the location of server, for example, the port number has been updated to 3333. The port number got updated. Now, what we have to do? Again, we have to give this new port number again to school service. Meaning, whenever one service updates the location, Whenever one service changes the location of service, like port number or server location, we have to update to other services where it has been invoked. This is the main drawback here. So the integration is becoming drawback. Because if one service changes location, we have to go to other service and mod update the code based on the new location. So the integration is becoming problem here. Here only two services, not a big issue. But in reality, we go with hundreds of services. We go with what? Hundreds of services. So if one service changes the location, we have to update to other services where it has been invoked. So we have to go to respect to services, again open the code and modify the code. So this is the main drawback. The integration is becoming drawback here. So to do this integration only, we make use of one server called as, one concept called as Eureka server. We have to configure Eureka server. So we have to configure Eureka server. After configuring Eureka server, what are the services we are creating? What are the microservices we are creating? We have to register that services into Eureka server. So this microservices we call Eureka clients. The microservices only we call what Eureka clients. 
so we need to register this eureka clients into eureka server register in registry so whenever we create a new microservice we have to register our services into eureka server this is the main thing register in registry okay so what is the meaning of register register means this location details these location details will be registered into eureka server the location details will get inserted into your eureka server now once we register our services into eureka server when school service want to invoke student service when school service want to invoke student service it won't invoke directly it will it won't invoke directly what it is going to do first of all it is going to connect to eureka server when one service want to invoke other service first it connects to eureka server and it's going to look up here so if one service want to invoke other service it's going to connect to eureka server and it's going to look up look up student service look up student service what is the meaning of look up it's going to take the location details it's going to take the location details then after getting location details then school service is going to invoke student service so what it's going to do once we configure eureka server we are to register our services this location details will come and store into eureka server then when school service want to invoke student service it's going to look up for the details location details in eureka server after getting the latest token location details it's going to invoke the service now in future in future if this port number gets updated to 3333 so we need not worry at all this new port number will automatically get updated to eureka you need not do anything only one time we have to register in registry only one time registration after that in future if your microservice changes the location as a developer we need not do any job that will the new details will get updated automatically to your request then when 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 one service want to invoke other service it's going to look up for that location details in your request gets the latest location details and it's going to invoke so the integration will become easy by using this your request server got it everyone clear any questions right so we need to see the complete application on this so we have to create student service complete application we develop so we are, we should create this student service and check whether that service is working properly or not then create school service and invoke school service invoke student service from school service and see the drawbacks then after understanding drawbacks we configure eureka server then we register our services into eureka server and when one service want to invoke other service we look up into eureka server and we are going to invoke it so that is a complete application we need to Develop it, right? 